Greetings, folks. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the advanced version of the ASS70 airspeed sensor from FR Sky. The new line of advanced sensors from FR Sky adds F bus support. They, uh, the previously were S port compatible, but now they're F bus compatible as well. F bus is, uh, is effectively F port 2, I think. Anyways, just bring up to date the connection methods of all these sensors. Uh, this is the ASS70 airspeed sensor. It uh, reads speeds up to 270 kilometers an hour. There's also an ASS100 which measures speeds up to 360 kilometers per hour. Now these sensors are designed to be plugged into your receiver, uh, into the S port port or the S uh, the F bus port. Now a question a lot of people are going to ask is Will this be compatible with iNav? Can you use the readout in iNav somehow? I haven't worked that out yet. I suspect it's not possible at the moment. Unlike the Matic airspeed sensors, which are designed to be plugged directly into a flight control board, these are designed to be used with your receiver. There is a feature in iNav called Smart Port Master, which uh, is meant to add the ability to plug S port sensors straight into the board and get it working, but uh, there's no documentation that I can find. There's no demonstration videos. Uh, and I've been mucking around with uh, the settings for hours and haven't been able to get anything working. So at this stage, I don't think it's possible to use this with an iNav board, but who knows. But anyway, you can plug it into your receiver. You can uh, use the output uh, in logic switches to uh, control flaps and uh, do different things, give you warnings uh, with air, airspeed in OpenTX and uh, Edge TX and Ethos as well. Uh, I can demonstrate, and I will, uh, the airspeed sensor working with S port and uh, ACCST D16, uh, S port and Access, and uh, Ethos uh, on a tandem radio as well. So, um, anyway, let's open it up and have a closer look. So, here's what we get in the packet we get a little card with QR code for manual. There's the little pitot tube, uh, there's the direct pressure and the static pressure ports. Direct pressure gets measured through the front and there's static pressure holes round about there. And we get some plastic tubing, silicon tubing, whatever, to connect to the ports. Uh, and the pressure sensor itself, plug them in there, I'll show you how in a minute. And there's the S port F bus connections there. You can daisy change sensors one to the other with these uh, S port and F bus connections. Now let's have a quick look at the manual ASS 70 and ASS 100 advanced versions. The uh, the non advanced versions have been around for quite a few years, so probably a lot of people will be familiar with them. Operating voltage four to ten volt, compatible with F bus S port protocol. You should note it, note this: the static holes in the pitot tube should extend at least 13 millimeters past the wing's leading edge or past any other obstructions. Further out, the better. Uh, and yeah, it sort of needs to be uh, away from prop wash and uh, you know not too close into the fuselage so that you get nice, clean, uh, undisturbed airflow onto the pickup holes. And we have some LEDs on there. If it's uh, flashing slowly, it's an S port connection, and if it's flashing Quickly, it's a F bus connection. I should be able to show you both of those things. So we have an X6R bound to the radio, and we'll plug the sensor in using a male to male servo cable. Got a slow flashing light on the sensor. Now we can go to the telemetry page. And we need to discover new sensors, and there we go, we have airspeed and the other sensors showing up. Now it's in knots, but if you go into that, click on that uh, line, you can edit the units. In knots, we want kilometers per hour. Back out of there. So now we have airspeed sensor on there. And if I blow on the tubes here, you should be able to see the unit uh, changing. There we go, I can blow up to 28 kilometers an hour. There you go, so that's working on S port and D16. We've got an Archer GR6 glider receiver. This one has the Vario built in and airspeed sensor and, and uh, Vario on the glider would make sense, I think. Uh, so let's plug this fellow in. Got the S port plugged there. 
fire up the receiver with a bit of power. And go into the telemetry page again. And discover new sensors. And you know, this receiver, as I said, has the Vario, so we also get altitude and speed, but um, but right at the top we have airspeed here in knots. Let's give that Yep, that's picking it up. So that's all good. That's running access and archer receiver and S port again. And finally we'll have a look at the tandem radio on Ethos with a tandem R10 receiver. Now with the tandem you can set up any pin as uh, S bus, F port, all of that sort of stuff. So I think I've chosen uh, channel or pin set number 10. Plug them in there. And I'll show you how to set it up. And we'll connect up some power. So there we go. We have fast flashing light. So this is on F bus. I'll show you how. And we're bound. Let's just go in now. To telemetry. And airspeed here. Let's see if we're working. Yep, that's working there too. So uh, let's back out of that. I'll show you. That's just discovering sensors as we did before. But I'll show you how you set up uh, F bus options. Scroll down to pin 10 F bus. There we go. In the options, you can choose uh, whichever channel, or you can, if you scroll right down the bottom, you can choose smart port. S bus or F bus. We'll choose F bus. Get out of there. That means we plug the F bus device into channel 10 on the receiver. So what we need to do now is pop it in a plane and actually demonstrate it out in the field. I've mounted the airspeed sensor under the wing on my Finwin X-Bird. Uh, that's a nippy little plane, so it'd be a good one to test airspeed on um, using tandem uh, the TD10 receiver you can see all the antennas there uh, it's all just taped on the bottom of the wing and you can see the, the tube from the static port here goes into the bottom plug on the pressure sensor unit and the tube from the direct pressure goes to the uh, top port there and then the S port connection just goes in through there into the receiver inside Okay, looking on the screen, we have uh, airspeed down the bottom, uh, GPS speed coming from the flight control board back to the screen here. Uh, and you'll see uh, GPS speed in my goggles too, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, let's go. There's Alan flying off. They're up and away. Beautiful view. So, GPS speed is saying 38 in here. Let's uh, put it in cruise mode. We'll cruise on down the coast. And what can we see there? Lost. 85 kilometers an hour airspeed and 87 uh, GPS speed. Better point towards the, the plane. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Lost. Which sense are we talking about? Turn you down. All right. Let's come back home, and we'll just watch that uh, airspeed. There's hardly any wind. There's a little bit of wind, so you will see a bit of difference between the airspeed and the. There we go. That's a bit better. Airspeed down the bottom. GPS speed in the middle, and they will be pretty much identical because there's hardly any wind. Beautiful view, look at that. Now, Alan's flying around with me as well, so I'd better stay away from him. Let's cruise on down this way. Enjoying the flight. Wow. Magic.
So what have we got? 60 and 60, roughly the same. Uh, so that's reflecting reality. This is cool. Come back home again. So, once again, 70 airspeed, uh, 66, 69. So, uh, it's a bit of a side wind, so they're going to be pretty similar. So there we go, that's how the FR Sky ASS 70 Advanced works. Pretty cool. Ha, ah, long landing. So this is uh, downwind now, so we should see more of a difference between... Um, actually, what I should do is put it into a return to home circle. No, I'll fly out to sea into the wind, so we should be seeing airspeed higher than ground speed, which we are. And now I'll fly back home. We should see uh, ground speed higher than airspeed. Into the wind again, airspeed will be higher than ground speed. Let's slow down. Wow, look at the lift. Hit the lift out there. Come back home. And we'll have slot down, ground speed higher than airspeed. This will be perfect for showing the difference between ground speed and uh, airspeed with a little bit of wind. It's good.